everyone. My name is Casey. Welcome to the Heart of Reviews. And I am in my, this, this is my Hallmark Christmas movie watching shirt and leggings and socks because it may only be October 21st, but the countdown to Christmas has started. I don't know what that was. I get to watch Christmas movies. I was not prepared for this day. It snuck up upon me, but here we are, nevertheless. And the countdown to Christmas is here. And it started last night with the new movie, Checking It Twice, starring Kevin McGarry and Kim Matula. I don't know if that's how you say it, but it looks like spatula. So that's what we're gonna go with. Super loose plot summary featuring Lucy. Lucy Goosey, blueberry pie. What is the plot of this movie? I don't remember. Okay, so plot. Scott is a hockey player whose father is Wayne Gretzky. His father's also absentee. And he gets traded to this tiny minor league hockey team in Idaho Falls, which is a farm system for a team in Boise, which also is a farm system for a real NHL team in Seattle, question mark? We don't know. But he gets traded to Idaho Falls, a place that he does not want to be, and his girlfriend breaks up with him because the distance. We also have Kim Matula, who has a name I don't remember, and she is just in her hometown, Idaho Falls, for Christmas. And she's supposed to be bringing her boyfriend, Trevor, but he has just poached one of her clients. She does corporate real estate. And so she dumped him for being a giant evil man-child, which so, so she should. But she doesn't tell her family that she's dumped him, which you'd think would be a whole big thing. Maybe she's gonna fake boyfriend it, but it, nothing comes of it. Her family's just like, oh, okay. We didn't care about him anyway. You should date Scott. Family runs a store. Her family also puts up the new Fighting Trouts, which is the name of the hockey team, in their guest place. So of course, Scott is staying in her guest house. They're so close, it's very convenient. I also forgot to say that their meet rude was that they were both in the airport and he started talking about himself and she didn't ask. Like she did ask, but she was being rhetorical. And they were both buying stuff. And for some reason they both give their credit cards at the exact same time. I don't understand how this cashier is running both of their items at the same time, but whatever, they both give their cards. And of course they have the exact same debit card. And so their debit cards get switched. So then later in the night when he tries to pay for dinner and she tries to buy a wreath, everyone in town is like, these are not your cards, people. And they have to find each other to switch back and be able to buy things because they only have one debit card and they own no other way to pay for things. And as part of the hockey team's charitable works, they have to go and give back to all the children, which is all hosted by Kim Matula's parents, naturally. She has a sister, the sister's married to Dave. She has a friend who does real estate, so of course you know that something's gonna happen with that, except the friend is really bad at real estate. So the friend desperately needs Kim Matula's help, desperately. She doesn't even know how to say that there are three and a half baths in a house. She's not good at what she does, so I don't really know why you would wanna join forces with her, but you know, friends, I guess. That's literally the plot. There isn't much of a plot. He's in Idaho Falls, she's in Idaho Falls. That's the movie. It's Idaho Falls the movie. But it's called Checking It Twice, which is a great pun. Pun that I did not understand because I don't understand hockey. But it's a hockey term. I learned that while watching the movie. First of all, I love that we started off real quick with men can still be irresponsible despite their career and success in equal amounts. We can have irresponsible man-child men. Love that. I'm also seeing that Hallmark is becoming obsessed with crazy scarves. So instead of any ugly sweaters, it was just like, I mean, beautifully knitted scarves, but very Christmassy. And I want 12. I want 12 of them. They're actually quite cute. I'm in Florida. I don't need scarves, but I would like those, please. Please, thank you. The writing of this movie was really, really good genuinely most of the time. It had sort of a modern sensibility. There was a lot of banter. The characters were very mean to each other, which you don't see a lot of in Hallmark, but like playfully mean, except for the guy who sells wreaths. Sir, I get that you want your 50 something dollars, but 
this is not the way to do it. Don't just be mean to this woman who's trying to buy one of your wreaths. The old lady who wanted to pay for the wreath was hilarious. It was very realistic in a silly Hallmark way. I loved Dave. Let's talk about Dave. Dave, an incredibly real character, very golden retriever energy. Something we don't see a lot of in Hallmark, or if we do, it's always a sort of like the funny side character. And Dave was a funny side character, but they also mentioned several times that Dave was a perfect man. He was lovely. He was everything you would want. We're not trying to change him. He was a different body type than we see on Hallmark, which is very important. Uh, and it's something new this year that I love to see. Let's get more Daves and let's get more Daves as leading men. Just gonna say. Sometimes though, the writing would be a little exposition forward. I loved it when Gus, the assistant coach, went up to Kevin McGarry's character, who I don't remember his name, and he was like, hey, are you, oh, Scott Griggs. I do know his name. Well, did you get his name? Yes, Griggs. Scott Griggs. Scott Griggs. Scott Griggs. Scott Griggs. Uh, hey, are you related to Wayne Griggs? Griggs. That's so weird. You have the same name. It's like Gus, you have the internet. You have the internet in Idaho Falls. You should, you should know who his father is. If your athlete's father is a very important man in hockey, it just feels like something you should know. I don't know. What am I to say? Other than that, the writing, it was very convenient. Everyone in this town cared so much about debit card names. And it wasn't just like, hey, enter your pin. Your pin is wrong. Oops. It was like, you're not stock wreaths. Yes. Leave my wreath stand. Which is just aggressive. It's the right thing to do, I guess. You know, great for security, but just strange that so much of the town cares about this. It's also weird that he only has a debit card and she only has a debit card. They don't have cash. They don't have a credit card. They don't seem to have a wallet. Like, they just have the card. One thing that I was thinking about while watching this movie is that Sports is a place where men are allowed to be children. Like professional athletes are allowed to be children just because that's how they're treated in their practices and with each other and as a team. Another thing about Scott Griggs is that he is very clearly inspired by Roy Kent from Ted Lasso. He's old, AKA in his thirties, and he really wants to be back in the big leagues. Although Scott Griggs never actually made it to the NHL, whereas Roy Kent, we all know he was a legend for Chelsea, but similar vibes, you know, he's now in the minor leagues and he's trying to work his way back up, but he's too old and he's training all of these new kids. He even gets a book from his coach. Just saying, Ted Lasso had a hand in this movie, but I'm not complaining. I love Ted Lasso. Uh, I loved that random hockey player who just had a very clearly fake blacked out tooth. <laughs> who was just very into Christmas and children and also like the cider princess. First of all, why why did Abigail get cider princess and not Amy Lou? Well, Annie Lou, what did Abigail do better? What is the criteria for being crowned cider princess? We don't know, we never find out, but that guy, that one random side character, he was really into it. I love that the two leads rarely interacted on their own. They only interacted pretty much when there were kids around and she only fell for him because of how nice he was to children. I was just waiting for them to have sort of the normal Hallmark montages. You know, they go ice skating, they drink hot chocolate and they, they went out and they decorated the tree together. But pretty much he was with her family and he was with some kids. She was into it and they fell in love just like that. Makes sense to me. I'm still confused about why Dave has a restraining order or fake restraining order from the kids hockey team, but good for him. The one old lady is just so funny. Just, I got a dollar. She's like, I can help you pay for it, dear. I got a dollar fifty. Girl, you don't know how money works nowadays. I love that you're trying, but that's not going to help. The eggnog part, the eggnog part was very quirky. It was very cute. When she called it a witch's brew, I was like, that's hilarious. Those are not words that you typically hear in a Hallmark Christmas. Like, this is not the good witch. I do want to know what's in this witch's brew of eggnog that makes it just so horrible. Gasoline? Was he drinking gasoline? Maybe. I loved ornament fishing. Ornament fishing was great. That was great. I saw that they were going into the little 
tubs of ornaments and I said, oh, okay, this isn't gonna be that interesting. It's just another Hallmarky middle bit, as I like to call them. That was hilarious. I wanna go ornament fishing for little plastic ornament fish. That is such a good game. This is gonna pain me to say. I don't know if you guys saw my, my video where I talked about what I was thinking about the new movies. I was not that thrilled about Kevin McGarry. I wasn't. I don't like One Calls the Heart. And I always got Kevin McGarry confused with this other actor who I didn't like. If you saw my video, you understand. But Kevin McGarry's not Paul. He's just Kevin McGarry. And he was great in this movie. He was really, really good. I thought he was a very grounded actor. Kim Matchla, she was amazing in Ghosts of Christmas Always. She was great again here. They had some nice chemistry, despite the fact that they really didn't interact all that much, as I said. Uh, they had some nice back and forth, some playful jabs at each other. I It's one of those movies also that starts out and they're really antagonistic to each other. And I'm like, that's, that's just not how people behave in real life. But, you know, it worked for them. It was quirky. It was modern. I liked it. At first, I was like, oh, no. He only wants to settle down because he doesn't think he can do any better. And that's sad. That's You don't want a man to settle down with you just because he doesn't think there's anywhere else to go. It's, that's not going to work out. However, when he does get called up to Boise and realizes that chasing his career, this is spoilers, by the way, realizes that chasing his career is not the only thing you can chase and that there are other ways to prove that you can be a better man and a bigger man. That was beautiful. Also, the whole relationship with his father, the fact that it was never resolved, we never tried to fix it. It was just, that is what it is. It's not gonna change. You know, his dad's not gonna have some big Scrooge change of heart at Christmas. I thought that was really real and really touching. There was a lot of realism in this movie. It was just realism, but in a Hallmark world where wild, fantastical things happen. So we're in that moment where it's the big, I want to profess my love to you scene, but we both have to leave. We both know this has to end. I was expecting an interrupted kiss. I kind of wanted them to for real kiss. I thought that really would have been sort of a break from tradition, but that's okay. But one thing that I really liked about this scene is that she starts it off by saying, I'm going to say something to you. And then just launches into this big thing that she's clearly rehearsed in her head. She's thought about a lot. She's nearly crying. It's sort of a goodbye. It's sort of a please stay. More than that, it's just... Here's what you mean to me. Here's why you're special. No matter what happens, I want you to know that, which I think is a very important lesson. You know, we don't always have to be like, hey, I love you. Please stay with me. It can just be a, hey, I love you. You're wonderful. I wanted you to know that. I personally related a lot to that. It was just, it was very anxious girl antics. You could see her crush and you don't see a lot of crushes on Hallmark. Like you see people fall in love in three days, but you don't see sort of, People going through this big life event where they really, 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 really like this person and then they can't have them. It felt very real to me. The insurance talk when they were kissing was adorable. That was hilarious. Loved it. That was a great joke. He's getting so many benefits. Euphemism intended. And her response when she was like, oh, great benefits. I, I understood that they, they made her say it like it wasn't a euphemism, but we all know. We all know. It was very cute. It was sweet, it was sassy, it was all the things that the movie was. It was the hallmark, quirky, fun fantasy while also being more true to life. So overall, I thought this movie had a really great blend of real life and hallmark life. It was fun, it was sweet. Am I gonna watch it again? Probably not, but I had a great time. It was a great way to kick off Countdown to Christmas. And if all the movies are like this, then I can't wait, I'm really excited. Thank you for watching The Heart of Reviews. You can find my, you can find the links in the doobly-doo. You can find my written reviews on Instagram. You can find me playing the Hallmark Christmas board game here on YouTube. And I'm also on Facebook. Okay, I don't know why I did that. Thanks so much. It's Christmas time. It's Christmas time. Lucy, Lucy. Did you know it's Christmas? Okay, b -b 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 it's Christmas. There's another new movie tonight. There's another new movie tonight. There's another new movie tonight. It's Christmas time. Uh, it's Christmas time. That was it. That's all I had to say. It's Christmas. End of video. Cut.